space, the final frontier. But it's very expensive to get there, so Dr. Lady settles for going up into his attic. Tonight's episode of The Mask Fanatic is brought to you by Trident. Yeah, no, no it's not really that, that would be silly. Don't pay any attention to that. Hi, how are you? It is once again time for The Mask Fanatic where we talk about interesting old Halloween masks of note. And I guess I didn't really need to say of note just then because the fact that they are of note had already been covered one second earlier when I used the word interesting. So that's kind of the same thing. You want me to start over? No? You okay? You good with that? Okay, if you're good with it, I'm good with it. Tonight's mask is a really old one. This is from way back in uh, 1979. Star Trek The Motionless Picture, Motion Picture came out and Don Post Studios released a line of uh, three pretty cool masks. Uh, largely forgotten today. They were only available in the 1979-1980 time period and then that was it. They never got reissued and my favorite of the three was this one, the Klingon. That's K-L-I-N-G-O-N. You know how to spell Klingon. I don't know why I said that. You sure you don't want me to start over? Okay, I'll just go on then. The Klingon here, as seen in Star Trek The Motionless Picture, 1979, was a very nice, very nice quality uh, mask for its price range. And it's kind of amazing that I've still got one after this many years that's in decent shape. It certainly speaks well of uh, just how good the quality of Don Post masks was way back in the day when they were as good as this guy. Now the other two in the series, uh, also from Star Trek The Motion Picture, were uh, an older version of Mr. Spock and a Vulcan Master. And the Spock, eh, not my favorite. The Vulcan Master, nicely done, but it just looks like a guy. He looking like a man. You know, it's more interesting to me when they look a little more alien and this guy I thought was cool now if you watch the old Star Trek TV show from the 60s uh, you may be aware that back then the Klingons didn't look really any different from earth people they just they were they looked like gypsies basically they look like a man you know and I never I never liked that because to me it was cooler when aliens looked like aliens when there was something alien about them and when Star Trek the motion picture came out I thought wow this is so cool they have really nailed what uh, aliens could look like because the Klingons for the first time instead of just having a normal forehead like a, an earthling like on the old show uh, in the movie they had this cool detailed forehead and they only ever had this exact look in that first movie because right away after that and in all the other uh, TV series and movies and various Star Trek spin-offs and things the Klingons always had a lot of lines on the forehead I never cared for that as much. I thought this this was where they should have left it. To me, this was just really cool because it looked plausible, because it looked like their spines grew on up the back of their heads, and it looked like this was sort of part of the spinal column, and it came on down the head, and I thought that was clever and, and cool and something that's, you know, anatomically uh, plausible. And the later Klingons, like Worf and, and, and others, who, whose names I can't think of at the moment, uh, all the later Klingons, uh, to me, the heads always kind of looked like someone's two thumb tracks in the clay. You know, they looked too designy. They looked patterned. Uh, this, I thought, looked like something that could actually occur naturally and would have a reason to grow this way, biologically speaking. But uh, the later ones, uh, what they went with, uh, instead of being this, they went with that that sort of, you know designy looking like I said it it more like it looked to me more like uh, patterns you would see on a vase or or uh, a, a wallpaper pattern or something like that something sculpted and designed rather than something that would naturally occur so I thought these were the best Klingons ever 
uh, the mask has been sort of reissued. I said it hadn't been reissued. This sculpture hasn't, but there have been other Klingon masks. Now the later ones uh, tend to have the designy head rather than just this straight um, spine. Although there have even been a couple of later attempts at recreating this mask. I know Ruby's uh, had one and they may still be selling it. Um, that was very similar to this but not quite as convincing, not quite as realistic, certainly not as realistic when you wear it, and not quite as well done in terms of the bumps because on the later versions from other companies the little bumps, uh, instead of looking like bumps like they do here, they almost look like they're so perfect it's like he has little studs or buttons or something pressed into his skin. And this looks just a little more organic to me, so I like this better. Very nice hair on these uh, of a type you don't see anymore, uh, known at Don Post Studios as salt and pepper yak hair, which uh, I, I don't know where to get hair like this these days. This exact type of hair is really uh, almost impossible to come by now. Laura, when she hairs masks, can fake it by blending different types of hairs together to get a similar effect, but this salt and pepper look was very natural and really added to the um, well, the perceived value of the mask made him look a lot more realistic and natural and again, a great mask. Uh, the Vulcan Master, pretty good too, but very hard to find. These are all hard to find because back in the day when we were all dimwits and wore our masks and let our goofy friends wear them for Halloween, we tore them up and destroyed them. So it's unusual today to see one in decent uh, display condition. So if you have one, score for you, friend, and if you don't, eh, you know, you have other things in your life, right? How bad do you need a Don Post Klingon? Okay, maybe you need one badly. I don't know. But uh, this is a nice mask in any case, I think. And um, if you're into Star Trek, you should uh, probably own one. And you, it should be the Don Post, which, by the way, another way it can be distinguished from the later editions is the Don Post ones were poured in black latex and then painted with the uh, skin tones. Whereas uh, most of the later ones were just cast in the flesh tone latex and just given a little bit of shading. Uh, I don't know if that's true 100% of the time, obviously, because there is a certain amount of experimentation that takes place at these manufacturing uh, places, and there are small changes and small details that uh, vary from mask to mask. But as a general rule, this guy, the Don Post one, uh, can be said to be the one that was black rubber with uh, flesh-colored paint over the black rubber. I like it, and uh, that's all I have to say about it. So. Until next time, remember, some of the things up here are just props and like toys, but some of them are real, and you have to guess which is which.